Mino kor na hepe na na amana tina na kiwa sa dupa si for the it ya gatung wa hedet wa mor sa sukar na fusna haria shalut habu. And language is a very, very important part of our diet. We talk about diet today. Language is very, very important. You know, the impact of what you say resonates with a person for the rest of their day, just like the food that you eat. I once went into an elevator where one of my brothers was part of the black power community, and there were about three, four white people in the elevator, and it was myself and my black power friend. And when I walked into the elevator, I said hi to everybody. So how are you doing? And everybody started opening up. Two Caucasians answered, one Caucasian didn't. The one that didn't, I said, excuse me, what's your name? So he told me his name. I said, where you from? So how did you get here? We in a hotel. He tells me how. I said, so what floor are you going on? I'm getting off of this floor. I hope you have a nice day. Closed out. So when everybody left, and I'm with my black power friend, he says, why are you being so friendly with these goddamn crackers? <laughs> so I say, if you were so angry with them, why you ain't smacked the hell out of them when they was all on the elevator? We put so much pressure on me for. So he says, why you kiss they ass, man? Why a nigga want to know how they feel? I said, I'm acknowledging life, they exist. I didn't want to disrespect myself. Just because they may have did things on a lower frequency, why I got to reduce myself to that low frequency? I'm God. I'm just watching out for my creation. They still are offspring of us, you know? They are some baby kids. The white folks is out of control. They are out of control. But well, just because they're out of control don't mean we have to be out of control. We have to preside as God. We can't be the same animals they are. We have to have God overstanding and saying, I know why you behave the way you do. I'll give you one example. 90% of Americans are vitamin D deficient. One of the corresponding detriments of vitamin D deficiency is depression and anxiety. This is what happens when you're vitamin D deficient. The number one place you can get your vitamin D is from the sun. In fact, all vitamins are produced naturally from sun exposure during select hours of the day. When you get it in supplement form, you're supplanting the immediate source. Why is this important? Well, if Caucasians are having a problem staying in the sun, then that would mean if 90% of Americans are vitamin D deficient, that would mean 90% of Americans are most likely suffering from depression, stress, and anxiety. If you happen to be ca ca Caucasian and you can't be subject to the sun's spectrum under normal circumstances and conditions, what do you suppose, what kind of temperament you think that Caucasians have? By nature, by nature they have to be stressed out, over anxious. Wall Street crash, they jump off the building. How come we don't respond to the world like that? We can eat fried rice and two chicken wings and feel good about it because they're doing a free 50 cent soda. <laughs> but if the white man had to live like that for one day, he'd jump off the building. We see by nature, that's how he is. I ain't gonna hate you because of your nature. If a lion eats one of my family members, I'm not gonna start hating lions and start trying to game bang all lions because a lion is a lion. So the white man is the white man. I'm not overwhelmed by the reality no more. And I understand why things are the way it is. Serial killers, if I told you if white people don't work out and exercise enough, they want to eat somebody. You probably say, man, that's a racist comment. But I teach the white man it's not my devil. He, he's not great enough to be my devil. He might be a hybrid. He might be a mutant. But that's too much power to make you my devil. That would mean you was in heaven with God and you got cast out and brought down here. You was born before me. I can't give you that credence. Just can't give that to you. So, think about every serial killer you've ever seen in your life. Were they overweight? Have you ever seen any overweight, no, cannibals? Have you ever seen any overweight cannibals? Maybe one overweight cannibal. Just think about it. It's only a skinny white man with a big head. Think about it. And he's able to eat big fat black people. Think about it. How you pulling that off? 
You see, if they don't work out, they don't have nothing to diffuse the adrenaline. You know when they got halal food? You have to cut the animal's head off as fast as possible so the anxiety of being killed doesn't produce adrenaline because adrenaline is toxic. Well, at the center of the Caucasians, melanin chain, there's different types of Caucasians. The ones we have a problem with, they have a lot of sulfur in there. And when mixed with the adrenaline, it causes them to become very animalistic. So they have to work out more to diffuse that poison that's built up in you naturally. They have to work real hard to diffuse that. And if they don't, they become very mean and nasty people. True. So you always see white folks just kind of running and jogging all the time. They make, it, they make sure their children eat the best foods in their school systems. They make sure the best foods is right around their neighborhood. But this is on purpose. Because if they don't exercise and they don't eat good food, they will eat you. This is true. This is true, and I know it sounds crazy, but I, when, you'll never see an obese white person that eats people. Just think about that. They, you would think someone that goes as far as eating people, we should see some of them be fat from time to time. You would think they have, so they have no more constraint for just eating regular meat. They should be pretty fat, but they're not. You see, this is the psychology around health. We have a circadian rhythm. And at certain hours of the day, it's prescribed moments in time where certain foods and certain demonstrations of life is more conducive. This is true. If you eat past 10.30, based on the human's circadian rhythm, your body decides, I'm not gonna digest or break down food no more until tomorrow. Start at nine o'clock in the morning, I'm gonna clock back in. So, if you wanna eat after 10.30, what we're gonna do is just store that shit in a colon or something. And you got three, you got cheese in there since you was three years old, right up in your colon. Because it compacts you. You can take a person's intestines and spread it around this room. So if you're eating after 10.30 p.m., your body, your cells have said, well, I'm clocking out whether you keep eating or not. So then I look at the black community and I see all these stores, the chicken spot open, two, three in the morning. I'm like, niggas is eating chicken at three in the morning. Bonus chicken at that. And I'm gonna ask y'all a question. When is the last time you seen your chicken spot get a chicken delivery? Yeah, this shit is starting to get scary. There's like a horror film about to happen right now. When's the last time the chicken spot got a chicken delivery? Cause these guys are selling chicken from nine in the morning to four in the morning and no truck is dropping off no chicken. Are they in a basement cloning this shit? Where are they getting the chicken from? And another question is this, how the hell can you sell all those wings and not that much breast? Are you growing chicken with only wings as an identity? Someone said, oh my God, you know we love chicken. Last time I went on this shit, I got chased out. I started teaching this chicken shit in the conscious community. I tried to teach this to some bozos in the projects, it wasn't working out. They just pulled their guns out, I got real ugly up in there. This is only my third try with this chicken demonstration. So I'm asking y'all to be patient with me. I'm not trying to offend nobody in here. So I'm saying, oh my God. I'm like, that, that's the shit I heard last time I got chased out after this chicken de demonstration. No, I'm paranoid as hell. I'm risking my life up here when I start talking to people about chicken. I'm so serious. Y'all think it's funny. I am risking my life. The more I talk about chicken, I see some people wigging out right now. I see their eyes twitching. <laughs> you better go on and talk about that white man. Leave my mother after chicken alone. <laughs> no, food has become a religion. Even the teachers start gangbanging on each other. Like, nigga, we repping broccoli, nigga. I'm thinking he's doing a blood sign. He's repping broccoli. And somebody else is like, that shit is a city. Now we doing carrots over here. I think it's blood and cribs. Shit, it's carrots and broccoli. And now we gotta be divided because of the foods now. Now we so smart, we done got so technical. Now we banging on each other because what type of veggies we eat? We are dangerous people when it comes to information. 
but I'm telling you, the food thing is so, so serious. When's the last time you seen a shootout at Whole Foods? <laughs> See, it's funny because it's actually true. I mean, chicken spots, since they came into the community, they've been having shootouts right around the chicken spot. Tape is always uh, around the chicken spot. People outline and chalk with the chicken in their hand. I've seen an outline, and I'm like, is that a drumstick in the outline? They got killed with a drumstick in his hand. But you go to Whole Foods, and you don't see this kind of violence where they're selling whole grains like Kamut, Amaranth, and Spelt, and Teff. But you find where they sell 50 cent sodas. And where they sell chicken at chicken spots that don't get chicken deliveries. That there's a direct correlation between bad food consumption and bad thinking. Anyway, you see bad food sold in the community. You see, the thinking or the frequency of the people are very low, too. It's real interesting. Trace minerals. There's a thing about the real vampires of this day and time. They'll have you go to work, and most times you can't get a job until you go into midtown Manhattan or in the city. You can't get a job in your own neighborhood, which is weird, because the people who own the businesses don't look like you, and they don't hire you, but we still patronize them. All of that is very weird. So normally you have to go out of your community to get a job. And they make you go to work where you have to leave at five or six in the morning when it's still dark outside. Then when it's lunchtime, they got skyscrapers scraping the sky, they're blocking the sun. So when you do get to get your afternoon lunch, you ain't getting sufficient sunlight. And then when you get off of work, it's dark. And then when you get some social time, you go to the club. And when you go to the club, it's dark. And you hang out for long hours, and you hope that the sun don't come up, because then you ain't gonna get no sleep with the sun come up. So you rush in your house to make sure you get in before it's dark. So you're getting the lunar spectrum, you're getting the moon spectrum. But you're not getting the full spectrum of the sun, because the moon is an illuminescent body by itself. It gets its light and its momentum from the sun. So why is this so very important? Because if you're only getting the moon spectrum, like Monday is lunis, lunar, moon, you become a lunatic because you're not getting the full spectrum of the sun. So you might find yourself in a club actually throwing bowls. I remember when the song came out. I'm thinking this shit figurative. Nigga elbow me in my chest. I'm like, what kind of music is this? Someone can get hurt, throw those bowls. I'm like, you really gonna throw bowls? Then they had a nigga named Mr. Cool out back in the day. And he's like, whoa, bitch, you better not jump in front of my tour bus. So I'm like, what are we gonna do now? We gonna actually rent tour buses to drive over bitches? Like, what is the mentality? Or chicken noodle soup with a soda on the side. What kind of music is this? I had a rough childhood. I ate mayonnaise sandwiches. Give it, raise your hand if you ate a mayonnaise sandwich back in the day. Now, the people who raising their hand, have you ever had chicken noodle soup with a soda on the side? There ain't that much poverty in the world to reduce yourself to some shit like that. I had ketchup sandwiches, mayonnaise sandwiches, but I never looked at soup and soda and said those two go together. You know when you when you pour, you take shit like uh, the, the the canned beans, you start pouring syrup in it and cutting onions and putting basil and everything. Like you really in a restaurant with canned beans and shit. That's when you know it hurts. When you chefing it with some ramen noodles and putting bell peppers and shit in the ramen noodles to try to lie to yourself that I don't need that pack. I could do something with these ramen noodles way better than that. Poverty hurts, man, and it makes us sick. Poverty hurts. Poverty, you haven't opened up the fridge knowing there's nothing in there and find yourself opening the shit up again? <laughs> like, what's this damn out of psychology? When you know there was nothing in it five minutes ago, you said, let's just check this shit again. <laughs> but you see, that type of stress produces toxins in your body. Stress. You find money, and it, and it produces what's called oxytocin. Oxytocin is called the truth hormone, or the bonding hormone. It's produced when a woman 
holds her baby and hugs the baby. Oxytocin is produced. Oxytocin is produced when the child sucks on her nipple to suckle or to get breast milk. And it causes her to have a higher inclination to bond with her child. And you're designed that way. So when the baby sucks on your nipple as a woman, it causes a bond between the mother and the child. It was designed that way. But if we don't understand the psychology and our physiology, then you let brothers who are no good for you suck on your nipple and you wind up establishing a chemical bond to them. So when I say, what black women, you need to guard your titties. <laughs> and you see one of those beautiful black men that look like they was in soul food or waiting to exhale. <laughs> and you put a cross on your chest. <laughs> I'm so serious, look it up. Letting people suck on your titties can be very dangerous because oxytocin is produced when the nipple is nibbled on and it causes you to bond with whoever you're allowing to be on your nipple. So you may have a nigga beat the hell out of you, you just can't get enough. Not realizing chemically you're attached to the person. That was there for you as a mother so you would have a bond to the child. So you can behave more like a protective being for your child. You may find somebody may be just completely toxic to you, but you just can't find a way to disassociate yourself from them and never understand it. If you want to get away from that man that's no good for you, block your titties. This is the name of the game. And it sounds crazy, but this information is actually true. It sounds crazy. But that oxytocin gives you a chill up your spine. It makes you connect with the experience or the person. So like when you find $10 on the floor and you don't want no one to see and you make the effort to step on it and make sure nobody sees you and now your foot is on top of the 10 and you're just watching your back to make sure no one's seeing this and now you start dragging your foot like a zombie and what's left of that $10 when you get the freedom to pick it up and you see a whole $10 you get it high it's called oxytocin, and endorphins also secrete. You get an actual high from finding money. So when you're making money, you actually get a metaphysical high or a chemical high, making money. This is true. Making money gives you a high. So what do you think it does to you when you're in debt? Uh. And then you beseech that same excitement. Same word. When you found that money, all of us has found money in this room before, right? It was an amazing feeling. Most of the time it was only like a dollar. And it was still an amazing feeling. Like things are looking up. And then it's looking at me like it's just a dollar. Like I'm like, shit is looking up. God sent this for me. This divine. It's a revelation. But you know the most flyest part about finding the dollar? It's to search for the next one. Because after you find money, you know you lit up. You open. Like for the next two weeks, you will be watching. Uh, every time someone gets up, every time a car moves, you be watching everything that you see because it's a high. It's the same thing that's inside of crack. The experience that you feel as a woman when you breastfeed, the experience that you get when you find money, it's the same chemical that's produced as a stimulant that gives you an incentive to be high when you make money. So everybody's on drugs. And if I say they on drugs, they're not making money, they're depressed. And they're looking for a stimulant to supplant that or suppress it. See, I got a DVD, it's called a direct correlation between bad food consumption and disease. And disease is not inherited, bad habits are. You don't inherit disease, you inherit bad habits that put you in the lane to get the disease of your predecessor. If you're gonna eat the same food in the same area that your predecessors had, then of course you're gonna wind up with the same disease. It's science. You never changed the environment. You never added new variables or took variables out. So what you expect to happen? So what are we talking about? For every taste craving that you have, there's an emotion associated with it. You just don't have a sweet tooth because you like sugar. You have a sweet tooth because you feel like you're not being loved. 
On Valentine's Day, we give people sweets. Because sugar is associated with love. This is true. So most of our community is suffering from what? Diabetes. <laughs> because your mother left you, your father left you. Your man cheated on you, your woman cheated on you. So you want to smoke a cigarette. And inside of cigarettes, what's addictive is not the nicotine. It's the sugar they put in it. Now you can do a Google search and you'll see they put maple syrup and plum juice into cigarettes. Mm -hmm. Crack is a big bowl of sugar. Crack is a giant domino bag stepped on by someone obese and put into a 12-12 slip and served to the people. Crack is a big bowl of sugar. Cigarettes is a sugar craving. Alcohol is a sugar craving. And if you have an emotion that goes unresolved, you now beseech a temporary remedy. It's called an appetite. When the emotion is not dissolved and you don't find no resolve for the emotion, that emotion corresponds with an appetite. So you can suppress the anxiety momentarily. But if you go for too long with that unresolved issue, that craving that you have will transmute into disease. So I can be out here seeing nothing but beautiful, voluptuous women that never talk to me. And after a while, it's going to overwhelm me in my lust. So I'm going to need an aphrodisiac to suppress the lust or the sex anxiety. What corresponds with this luster? Fish, as an example. Fish is an aphrodisiac. Fish is an aphrodisiac. So I say, hey, what up, mom? And she don't talk to me. I'm like, damn, that girl beautiful. What up, mom? She don't talk to me. Damn, that girl beautiful. What up, mom? And all throughout the day, I'm talking to women and they ain't talking back to me. I, mean, I need to get some fish and chips. And I don't even know why I'm craving fish and chips. Oh yeah, I was slick because the second I found out this was a sexual stimulant, I was buying my wife red lobster every day of the week. I was tricking red lobster. She said, this tastes so good, I'm like, eat, eat. Keep eating. I'm trying to get her aroused. You get nervous, my phone bill might cut. My house is going to foreclosure. What do you do? You bite your nails, you're nervous. Nails are crunchy. Therefore, nervousness corresponds with that which is crunchy. That which is crunchy is normally saturated in oil. So if you don't get rid of that which is making you nervous, you're going to eat a bunch of chips or fried foods. And you're going to with prostate cancer and wound cancer. Because your life makes you nervous, so it causes you to want to eat something crunchy. And that which is crunchy, crunchy is, uh, crunchy is in too much oil. So then your cholesterol goes up. Cause all because of your phone bill. And all because of your student loan. And all because of your foreclosure. And your sexual life isn't right. So then after you eat your crunchy food, now you gotta eat a bunch of fish. Subject to mercury and things of that nature. And you're so depressed, you become a burden to yourself, therefore you're a burden to the people trying to love you, so now nobody wants to deal with you no more. So now you beseech love, so you just, get sweet too much, got a craving. Got to eat sugar. So we don't resolve the emotional problems we have. It's going to create the stimulus for what we call an appetite. And if that appetite should persist, it will transmute into disease. Because too much of anything isn't good. Y'all walking with me? So this is true. Say, man, how do we fix the situation? You can eat all the good food on the planet to avoid the toxins that destroy you or plague you. But if you don't change your environment, you're gonna wind up subject to the same disease. Sometimes I see healthy people say, I don't even understand how I got this disease. I'm eating nothing but kale and okra. This is what they do. Why am I sick? I'm eating kale and okra. Because your wife make you sick. Because your husband make you sick. Because the energy that they harness helps you produce the same toxins inside of you that you try to avoid from the food that you've been eating.
Your environment can have you stress and produce the same chemicals you try to avoid when you eat the right food. People can make you sick. Situations can make you sick. Just being around the wrong energy and answer. I'll give an example. Okay? When a person gets too upset, they get very angry, they get very hot, heat rises. Your brain is 52 ounces and it rests on water. The body is electric. Okay? When you breathe in oxygen, oxygen attaches itself to protein that has been broken down into amino acids, and upon contact, it explodes and, and in essence creates natural electricity to flow from the spine to the brain. Keeps you alive. But water is a superconductor of electricity, so it makes sense that we should have water by the brain. But when a person gets angry, heat rises. So when heat rises, it pulls away from the water that the brain is resting on. Thus you short circuit. So you might find yourself with your cell phone in your hand, talking to somebody, cursing up a storm, angry, and you say, ah, I can't stand you. Bah! You just broke your iPhone. And the worst part about it is, you're looking like, who's gonna clean it up? <laughs> and you the one that did it. You had a short circuit. But what does all this have to do? With everything else, with people becoming your disease. When a person gets real angry, it causes electrons to thrust out their outermost valence. So in the immediate valence, only two, can, two electrons can occupy the space in the first valence of an atom. Outside of that first valence, every other valence can only hold eight. They can covalently bond, which is to share an electron, which is polygamy for atoms, or it can ionically bond, catch an electron and become a new element. When a person gets upset, okay, your body, to maintain its pH, has chloride in it. Or chlorine, you know, the same stuff they put in the water in pools to not compromise the integrity of the health mission. To make sure that certain life forms that are parasitic to you can't thrive in that alkalinity. But when you get too upset, the sodium in the body raises. Sodium is a form of salt. And then what happens when you get too angry, the electrons start being thrusted off the sodium. So thus they look for the first thing they can attach to, which is the chlorine by nature, because you're full of water. So NaCl becomes table salt. So when you start acting funny or angry, niggas in the South say you acting salty. <laughs> And I always wonder, how did they do that without the chemistry class? I done went years of study for a nigga to just turn around and say, you acting salty. I'm like, you're a genius. <laughs> Sodium chloride. When you get too angry, and that's why your blood pressure rises when you get angry, because you're producing salt, and too much salt causes your blood pressure to rise. But who would have thought you can make the salt based on emotion? Who would have thought this? That you're actually making your seasonings and your spices without eating. So we talk about holistic health. It's more than what's put into your mouth. It's what you subject yourself to. The people, the places, and the things you surround yourself with can make you just as sick. You can be the most healthiest eating person in the world. But if you don't like your financial paradigm, you be plagued with disease because you will produce the same chemicals that you're trying to avoid when you're eating good food. So I just want to show one slide. It's the last slide that I want to show. And of course we have our outline, our outline recipe cookbook over there. We have a When I Had Diabetes book in there, in the breakdown. We have to produce gods in there. We have to produce gods again. And one of the main reasons I don't, oh thank you brother, one of the main reasons I don't make subscriptions to religion 
is because they invest a lot of our potential, our genius, our brilliance into one figure. Thus, you disassociate that potential from yourself. I invest everything into Jesus. And everybody else that was fly died already. And anybody else that's going to be fly has to come back. So where does that leave me at? But I know in the doctrine, may the gods manifest in the flesh. If I see you do it, then surely I know I can do it myself. But in order to produce gods again, we do have to have a holistic approach. We do have to change our health paradigm. But I look at sports and entertainment and I say, the sports is deep. I'm seeing something in sports that tells me about our people. But we have to start challenging each other in intellectual ways. So let's play this. This is the only slide I have. But one slide, PowerPoint. <laughs> <laughs> so we see when people first started dunking, this is how it looked. Look at old school do they dunk. Then they started jumping higher. Then we started throwing alley-oops. But niggas was like, yo, the next generation said, if they can do that, I can do this. So this dude does a 360, throws the ball in between his legs and dunks the ball. He's possessed, look at this guy. <laughs> but that's not even enough. Look at him. That's not even enough. So soon another brother comes, he gets the ball and says, fuck it, I would just jump over on somebody. He's seven foot tall. I was just, and look, he's possessed. I was just open. So I'm like, that's dumb. And how did that get started? From a simple layup. And someone seen someone do the layup. So someone dumped, and someone seen someone do the dunk, and they said, well, I'm gonna jump higher. And someone seen someone jump higher, and said, I'm gonna catch the alley -oop. And someone seen alley you and said, I'm gonna jump in the air, put it through my legs, and spin, and then dunk. Then someone else seen that, said, the only way I can top that is if I just jump completely over a human being. And I don't know what niggas is going to do in 2014. But I'm saying if we challenge each other like this intellectually, who writes the most books? Who speaks the most languages? Imagine what will become of us. Imagine it. Play it one more time for close. Just imagine. Look at this and conceptualize. If we took it to this level mentally, See, I saw Dr. Young as my teacher, he wrote 400 plus books, spoke over 16 languages. I said, if he could do it, he's a human being, I definitely could do it. So I came out with my 83rd book yesterday. And I speak eight languages, one of which I created. My book for the language is over here. Go ahead, sorry if I can get a bit. So I just want you to look at this and think about what we can do. This is how we started, just talking. And look how they're feeling themselves. Look at him, he just jumped high, he feeling himself. And he caught it in the air, he thought he was top shit. Look at him, the white people love him. Look at him, Mike did his thing. Then he go and he crush everybody. He do a 360 in the air, ball through the legs, dunk. And just when he thought he was on top of the world, just when he thought he was on top of the world, look at that, that's insane. Then you're gonna have this happen. Someone's gonna jump over somebody's head. And as I said, he's possessed. You have to be possessed to even. Who would think like this? Who would just think, well, in the middle of the day, I just have to go hide. Who would think like that? But imagine us mentally. That's what we was in Egypt. We was mental giants. We were mental giants. Do you know? There's a little over 600 muscles in the human body. And guess what exercise causes you to use more than half of it? Unlike, you can do swimming. If it was possible for you to swim, do pull-ups, do push-ups, and do this, you still couldn't make it to this exercise. There's a little over 600 muscles in the human body. Guess how much muscles it takes to meditate? More than 300 plus. No other exercise on the planet requires more muscle than staying still. The only thing second to that is reading. Because the amount of muscle, the amount of cellular concentration it takes to stay still and focus on one thing. You see, when you're driving, you're also talking to people and doing multiple things. When you're exercising, you're also doing that thing while also doing multiple things. But when you're reading, 
that's outside the body. And in order to control outside the body experiences, you have to have a certain level of control over the muscles in the human body. It takes over 300 muscles to meditate and over 300 muscles to read. No other exercise on the planet requires that much muscle work. So in the realm of mental geniuses, you have slim people kick your ass. You have all these muscles and wouldn't even know the mental bodybuilders are the ones that can defeat you, perhaps without a touch. So I'd like to thank you for your time, your energy, and your patience. And hope you all are Before I go to the Maddox spot in the evening, I'll be in the juvenile uh, prison uh, in the morning in Brownsville. And just understand that they actually built prisons in picking up. They actually built prisons in the neighborhood, crossroads. So I'm going to be in there. I'll give away free books every time I check the youth out. These are 12 to 16 year old young men that are incarcerated in their own community. Imagine with the psychology you come out your house. You see the chicken spot, you also see the, the local prison. Chicken spot is right there. And then the prison is right there, and then your home is right here. And McDonald's across the street. Think about that psychologically, what it's telling you as a young child when there's a prison right in your neighborhood. You ain't going to school, you're going to prison. So I'm going there, anybody that's interested in getting in contact, just come say what up, we'll show love, support. I got a two, three hour class they allow me to do in there. Um, the material is free. Come with valid ideas. Come with valid ideas. But we have to show love to them brothers. We can't leave them out there. My wives go to the juvenile facility, detention centers for the sisters, and we give out rich mom, poor mom books, financial fiance, and my wives talk to them and build with them. Come out and, and reach out to these brothers and sisters because a lot of them don't have family around them accessible to them. They got to feel the extension of the extended family. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. That's this Wednesday. That's Wednesday. That's I kind of know who I am too. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Mm -hmm. Nice of you to come out today and spend some time with me. Um, I guess I'll talk about health. <laughs> There seems to be a, a lot of problems with uh, health, and um, they're not going to go away until we're free as the people, to tell you the truth. That's, that's not going to help. You can't be healthy and cultureless. It's impossible. But nonetheless, to help you put new curtains on your jail cell, I'll talk. Um, it seems to be, um, we tend to think that scientists are always talking about facts. But we in science don't always talk about facts. We mostly talk about our beliefs. And beliefs are not facts. And the biggest problem I have with talking to people about science is they take science's beliefs as facts. They are not facts. We have the belief and we call our beliefs theories. There's a theory of evolution. It has never been written as a fact. A black woman didn't produce white people. That is not a fact. That is a belief of scientists. Evolution is a belief. We call it a theory. We call it the free radical theory. We call it the antioxidant theory. We call it electron orbital theory. We call it the theory of gravity. We have all of these theories, but you take them as facts. And that's the major problem I have. Didn't know black women in Africa produce white people. Get over it. It's a belief. The problem with beliefs are they're more powerful than facts. Wars are fought over beliefs, not facts. A belief is more powerful than any fact. We have to be able to accept a belief and accept a fact. It is a belief that I'm having a problem with. It's all right for you to believe in Santa Claus. 
I'm not trying to change your belief, but you know Santa Claus is not a fact. You have no problem with those things like that. But when it gets to food, nutrition, your health, homosexuality, you take all these theories as facts. Let us start off with how you are miseducated along with myself, because I'm trying to save myself as well as you. You were born, and the largest part of you that grew was your heart. Your heart grew first, and then your brain. And then your liver grounds your brain electrically. Everything starts from the root. The tree grows from the root. And then the trunk grows, and the branches, and the leaves, and the flowers, and all that sort of thing. And your thoughts grow from the root of your brain, called the brain stem. The thoughts grow there. Your emotions grow from there. Nothing happens singularly in the body. When the emotions grow, they grow like a bunch of grapes. We call it a neural net. You cannot have a single emotion by itself. If you have love, love is attached to anger, frustration, rage, hatred. It's attached to all the emotions. That is a fact. When you love someone, you also love their ignorance, their stupidity, their bad habits. You love the whole bunch of grapes, call them a crazy person. I mean, you're a lover or whatever. <laughs> all of that comes in a package. We call it a neural net. So your emotions grow from your brain stem, your thoughts grow from your brain stem, and then they branch out to what we call the cerebrum and the emotional center of your brain. So you go from the brain stem, which we could say is where you get letters from, and the middle part of your brain, which we call the parietal lobe, that's where you make the letters into a word. And up here, we call it the frontal lobe. That's where you make the words into a sentence. So you have letters back here, words here, and a sentence here. That's how these thoughts and emotions grow. They grow from your root. So the objective is if you put a tree in the bad soil, or any plant in bad soil, it won't grow too well. And you know that. So we have to get to the brain stem to make you crazy as possible, dysfunctionalize you. Some of you like to call it DNA, and we don't know what that means. Dioroxonuclear, whatever the white people like to tell you it means. It's just two strings of sugar, and in between of it is like a ladder. That's the amino acids, which you call protein, and that's how it grows. It has to have attached to two sugars, and then there's the rugs on the ladder, which you call the DNA. That's where the code is on these rugs of the ladder. So it's growing up from the base. The ladder doesn't start from the top, it starts from the bottom, it starts from its root. So it's important to understand the root of your emotions, the root of your thoughts, because you are manipulated more by your emotions than how you think. Some of you think quite well about junk food and McDonald's and Obam Bam, I mean Obama. <laughs> you have these nice thoughts about him. That's good, but your emotions are another way. Your emotions are attached to another part of this whole thing that goes on. You know intellectually that he's the president of a white company and the president of any company be it a baseball team, a football team, their job is to raise money. A president of a football team has to raise some money or else he's gonna lose his job. Presidents are fundraisers. That's not the person you want to talk to. They just about raising some funds. And that's what Obama does, raises some funds for Wall Street, you know, what you call it, bailouts or whatever the hell you call it. He's doing his job for that white corporation he works for. He doesn't work for you, Negroes. <laughs> Those are the facts. I mean, I'm not having up against the boy. He probably knows how to pick cotton quite well. 
Well, those are the facts. And you can cerebrally, intellectually digest all social stuff, but I want you to have an understanding of something called your body. So I have to give you some scientific understanding. Social stuff you understand. Columbus discovered America. He discovered Africa. He discovered Negroes and watermelon. Okay, we got that out of the way now. But we have to understand some science because African people are scientific people. It takes a science to build some pyramids, my dear brothers and sisters. We are scientific people. And we have to go back and capture that science. So all of these thoughts start from the brain stem and then they have an the emotion attached to them so they can give them a value. And then the front part of your brain makes the sentence, gives the orders, as it were. Now, in the birthing process, what we're trying to do is get a range of, of how far to go with your anger and your frustration. We want you to know how far to go, the limits, and we call those limits bipolar, binary, the male and female. Every emotion is bipolar. Every disease is bipolar. High blood pressure, low blood pressure. That makes it bipolar. Hyperactivity, hypoactivity, that's bipolar. Every thought and emotion has a range of acceptance. And outside of that range, happiness can hurt you. Some people are happy gambling and shooting crack. Happiness can hurt you, and happiness can help you. Anger can help you, and anger can hurt you. When you put it in a place where it does not belong, then it hurts you. So we have to know the range of our emotions. When to use your anger for your benefit. When to use your hatred for your benefit. That's giving you the range. And you can only get that range from your mother and father if they are bonded in a relationship, holistically. That's giving you the range. Now, if daddy ain't there, or mama ain't there, you don't have that range. Not for that moment of childhood, but for the rest of your life. So the objective is to know when to stress the sperm and know when to stress the egg. If you can stress those two, you can dysfunctionalize a Negro forever. We have to know how these things. So, the burping process in itself is a ritual. A ritual is a behavior that you repeat. If you repeat it over and over again and it hurts you, we call it addiction. To understand addiction, all you have to do is understand McDonald's or J.C. Penney or, or any factory that makes something, they want you addicted to that product. Ford, Mercedes. You say, I like Ford, you keep buying Fords, you keep buying Fords, because they have addicted you to the product. Advertisers are masters of addiction. If you want to understand addiction, study Coca-Cola. They know how to addict people. That's what they do. So to have addiction is not a bad thing, it's just to have the addiction in the wrong place. But you're already addicted to something, over a something. It's just you put the addiction in a place where it does not belong. And to move things, you have to have emotional muscle. You can't ask someone to love you and they don't have the emotional muscle to pick up your love. So you have to develop the emotional muscle to do things. And to develop the emotional muscle, you have to have the emotional vocabulary. To have the emotional vocabulary, you must have the emotional budget. To have the emotional budget, you must have the emotional expense account. Because we are ruled by our emotions. That's how they sell cars, brassiers, panty drawers, or pantyhose, or whatever. That's how the Koreans sell their nails. That's how they sell wigs and weaves. They're manipulating your emotions. That's why you go to the movies. That's why you listen to songs. Because you want to be emotionally manipulated by someone else. We have to understand these things so we can get out of this rut because we've been emotionally had. Some of us are addicted to white people. We want their Grammys, we want their Oscars, we want their diplomas, we want their degrees. We're addicted to them. That is our problem. But we don't see it as addiction. But that's what it is. 
Our happiness is defined by someone else. We are addicted to white people. And that is too bad. But nonetheless, understanding addiction is it understand emotions. To understand emotions, you have to understand the physical body that produces them. And the physical body that produces them is what I'm talking about. We're talking about the bipolar range for everything. Everything is bipolar. Someone says they have a bipolar disease, I'm saying, okay, we got that part straight. What's the disease? We have all of these buzzwords that means absolutely nothing. In science, we just have a lot of words we throw around that mean absolutely nothing. And you say them like you're saying something. Now, we start off in the womb, as the Greeks call it, because they thought the woman's penis was cut off and she was wounded. So they call it a wound. That in itself is stupid. But you think it's a wound, so I just say it's a wound. Okay, she's wound. Duh. I mean, we say things. I'm going to get some coffee. Yeah, I know coffee is a bean, but what are you getting? Coffee soup. You're not drinking coffee, you're drinking coffee soup. The Negro call it what it is. And if it's a bean, it's a carbohydrate, so you're drinking a carbohydrate soup. Coffee? Hell, why don't you call it pinto? Navy. Black Eyed Peas. That doesn't say nothing. You go into, what's that, Star Puppy, whatever that name is. You go in there to get some soup. Negro. A carbohydrate soup. Just call it what it is, and then you have a better understanding of what's going on. Now then, people have these emotions, and you don't know how to use them to your advantage. So if you don't know how to use them to this advantage, then someone else is using them for you, to their advantage. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. If you don't know how to use it, somebody else is going to use it for their advantage. And that's what the addicting arm of General Motors does, Mercedes does, what you call commercials, which are addicting things. Now, you have this, uh, baby is being formed in the mother's womb, as you call it. And the heart sends out this electrical charge about 15 feet. So it's a heart-to-heart -heart communication that the baby has with its mother. Aside from the other bonding things that are required to bond you to anything, to bond you to America, to bond you to Trinidad, to bond you to anything, I have to go through this original way in which you were born. You're in your mother's womb and you're drinking amniotic fluid. That's the fluid the baby's floating in. And in that fluid is vitamins and minerals, and minerals carry electrical charge, and we call it electrolytes. So the baby can hear this electricity buzzing like you can hear it in cables. And it buzzes real high when the lady's angry. So the baby can hear anger. These electrical charges are in the amniotic fluid, and the flashes are real bright yellow, orange, red, real bright when the lady's anger. So the baby can see anger, hear anger, and drinks the amniotic fluid and can taste anger. And the baby touches the amniotic fluid so the baby can feel anger. To the baby, anger is holistic. It involves every sense sore that the baby has. The ears are a sense sore or a sound. The ears do not know what they are Hearing. The eyes are sensors of light. The eyes do not know what they are seeing. The taste buds are sensors of food. The tongue does not know what it's tasting. You taste with your brain, you see with your brain, you hear with your brain. You have one sense that's common to all the other ones. It is your common sense. So I'm just trying to get to this science part of it all. So the baby is bonded to the mother with its one sense, its brain. Because it tastes with its brain, it sees with its brain, it touches with its brain, it smells with its brain. So if I want to bond you to New York City or the United States of America, I better have a flower that you can smell or a fruit that you can taste. New York has a fruit, New York has a flower, New York has a color, New York has an anthem. And that's what bonds you to New York. 
because they're going through the same process that your mother took you through. You have to use all your senses to bond to someone. Do you see where I'm coming from? Am I getting a little too technical? Because I don't want to get too technical. I don't know how it feels to be insulted by people who think they're intelligent, you know? I'm not all that intelligent, you know? You're not all that intelligent. A book cannot make you intelligent. I write books. A book helps you to exercise your intelligence, but God gave you intelligence. You're just exercising it through a book. A book cannot make you intelligent. A book helps you to exercise with something already there that God gave you. God gave you intelligence, God gave you life, God gave you, you understand what I'm talking about here? I'm trying to correct some of our miseducation as I go forward with what I'm talking about. But sometimes it becomes very difficult, you see. Uh, so, the baby's bonded that way to the mother and father because the baby can send out a signal to the mother when it needs some more vitamin A or vitamin C or vitamin D. It sends it out through hormones because the baby cannot speak Swahili or English or Chinese or Japanese. The baby speaks emotions. So the emotionally sends a signal to the mother eat something with some vitamin A. And the mother eats something with some vitamin A. So she acts differently when she wants vitamin A as opposed to when she wants vitamin D. She changes her behavior. The father observes the behavior and learns the baby. Because the baby is not being born. The baby is giving birth to two adults as the parent. The baby is pregnant with the mother and father. The mother is pregnant with the baby. And the father is pregnant with the mother and the child. Everybody's pregnant in an African relationship here. Did I go too fast? <laughs> the baby's taking the mother and father through emotional rites of passage. That's why her behavior changes. So that helps the father understand the baby before it's born. Emotionally. The father is pregnant with the mother and the baby. The mother's pregnant with the child. And the child's pregnant with the two adults burping in his parents. Am I going a little too fast? Yeah. I'm just trying to correct some things before I go forward too much. Because sometimes I forget and I say stuff. Because I went to white school, you know? And it kind of messed me up, you know? Yeah. I'm really, you know, I've been dysfunctionalized by my education. And that's true. That's why I buy white toilet paper, because I want white people to take some shit. <laughs> But nonetheless, that's my dysfunctionality. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to go there. I don't want to get ghetto. I'm educated. I'm college. I'm college. So we're going through this whole thing because we're trying to be humanized by this process called birthing. Now, if the mother's eating a lot of carbohydrates, which turn into sugar, you're probably going to have a sugar baby and the baby's gonna weigh 9, 10, 12 pounds. That's a sugar baby. That baby's coming out already addicted to carbohydrates. If the mother's taking alcohol or cocaine or something like that, and we're gonna have a big problem this time because the, mother's, the mother has all these eggs in the ovaries, fellas. They have all the eggs they ever have in their life when they're born. And these eggs don't have an immune system. So when the lady drinks the alcohol, the alcohol goes to the unborn baby, the egg. So the, that means that when the baby's born, that's three generations that are messed up. A baby girl in the mother's womb has eggs. Are you still with me? The woman drinks the alcohol, it goes to the baby girl, but the baby girl can fight it off, but the baby girl's eggs cannot. So that's three generations deep. When you're looking at a child, you're looking at the third generation of somebody that made crazy. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You're looking at the third generation. You're looking at a brain that has been organized differently. If I just lift up muscles, uh, when I make this muscle in my arm big, I lift up weights all the time with just this one arm, this arm is gonna get big. You're lifting up thoughts with just this one part of your brain. It's called the imaging part of your brain. You're not using this part of your brain. You're using the imaging part of your brain. 
And you follow me? That's why they... Okay, okay, all right. I, I know to you, I'm Dr. Africa, and all that stuff that goes with all that celebrity stuff, so I'm up with, I got Africa, I got Africa, all that stuff. I'm from the projects. That's where, I, that's where, my, that's where I'm at inside of me. I'm on the projects, welfare, you know the stuff? Yeah. Sharing the bed with my brothers, no less thinky beat till I was 17 years old. Seven brothers and sisters, people stealing your socks, your drawers, and stuff like that. You know? Yeah. You better hurry up to the table or you wouldn't end up eating. I'm just trying to tell you how things was going on. Just so to me, I'm still that, that fellow. You, I'm not Africa. Whatever. Nonetheless, let's go back whole scenario. So we're looking at this process of how we become dysfunctionalized. That's what I'm trying to say. We're just using the imaging part of our brain, looking at a monitor, a computer. So when a word is misspelled on the computer, you change the image, but you're not changing the logical sequence of why it's misspelled. The brain has changed because the children are only using the imaging part of their brain more than they're using the frontal part of their brain. That's why they put pictures of a hamburger at McDonald's. They punch the picture, they don't press the price. Are you still with me? So they have a different brain and you talking to them like they have a brain from 1980. That's not happening. They have an imaging brain. It's important how you look. <laughs> it can be cheap clothes, whatever, but it looks good. You look good. That's the image. Not just spiritual content. Of, how aware you are of your culture? No, it's how you look. Your image is more important. Uh, am I still, are you still with me here? Yeah. She sure looks good, that's her image. It's looking good is being spiritual, being in contact with your ancestors. That's a whole life of looking good. Right. You just look good. No, no, that's the image. Because we're dealing with a new brain that's we're trying to tell you. You can't apply what you learned about psychology anymore because it's another brain altogether. You can't talk the same way you talked to children years ago. You say, I'm talking and they just don't get it. And I'm talking to all the stuff. Yeah, because you're talking to the wrong part of the brain. You're talking to the frontal lobe and all that stuff is back here in the imaging part of the brain. Okay, I don't want to say you cheering. I just try to <laughs> help you understand what's going on. It's another process altogether. Now, you go into the brain, you study psychology, you say, I'm going to figure this out. You study the wrong thing. They don't have a mental problem. You ask them how much is one and one, and they say two. That mind functions quite well. What they have is an emotional problem, and you're talking to that mental part of their brain instead of the emotional part of their brain. You gotta go back to the original language in which they learned emotionally. They talk emotionally to their mother before they're born, and their mother talks back to them emotionally. So if you wanna to talk to them, you have to talk to them emotionally and to the imaging part of their brain. Or else you just analog parent with a digital child. You're missing the whole thing, and that's done on purpose without education. You say miseducation. Carter G. Woodson said that. It's a totally miseducation. We're miseducated in biology, chemistry, nutrition, and the hell we're talking about history. We're miseducated in those basic things that ran the culture, the legs that moved the culture. We don't have them anymore. It's a science to this thing. A baby's, most of their taste buds are in their cheeks. That's in my book, Raising Black Children. Here, yeah, I wrote down all the rules for parenting, the skills you need, and most black people have never read a book on parenting in their life. You're trying to raise a technology to get you out of this condition. You're trying to produce a product to get you out of this thing called oppression and slavery, and you can't produce that product because you don't have the tools. 
It's like me telling you to build a Mercedes and give me a tennis racket. You say, I don't have the tools to do that. So you don't have the parenting school tools. I wrote a book on parenting. Black and black. I ain't buy that book. I ain't no parent. But if you're talking to a child, you're talking to a, you're, you're a parent. And the child wants to be a parent. The child doesn't want to be a, a child. So why don't you act like a child? They don't want to be a child. They want to be a parent. Don't you get it? They want to be an adult. You tell them, why don't you act like a child? That's stupid. They look at you because they want to be an adult. Nonetheless, I don't want to get into one of my black rages. Boy, you know, I'm the guilty white people in there. <laughs> and they had to go down the apple again. <laughs> but I came out of an era, it's kind of old, I come out with these older people, Amos Wilson, Henry Clark, H. Rap Brown. I come from that era, so maybe what I'm saying is maybe a little lost there. We, we had a little focus at one time. Everybody was wearing Afro, even Jane Brown was wearing Afro. <laughs> I'm telling you. Black and brown. I mean, we come out with all that stuff. You see this stuff that's going on now? Please, oh, it's disgusting. Nonetheless, let's go back to this whole thing called uh, eating and nutrition, that sort of thing. So, we realize we have a new brain that we're dealing with. We realize that that whole code for the brain has changed, which you call the DNA, which our ancestors uh, will call our ancestors, or the gods. The gods of righteousness, the gods of justice, the gods of harmony. So they say you you you're making the gods angry. Are you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, that's what they they talk about. You making your DNA right? That's that's the word we use today. That's my DNA. Yeah, you make you messing that up. Totally messing it up because you're not giving it the right soil to grow from to produce the DNA that you need. It starts from the root. And if you give in the soil white sugar, bleach white flour, are you still with me? Booty call music videos, insulting altogether. If you feed that into the body, that's what's going to grow your DNA. Are you still with me here? Yes. Because I mentioned before you're born, you have sensors. The eyes don't see, the brain sees. The eyes just sense light. You have one sense and five sensors. You don't have five different senses. You have one sense, your brain. So you feed this DNA all of this garbage, you're gonna get garbage DNA. That's all I'm trying to say. If you want to nourish the tree properly, you would ask the farmer does he feed his tree Seagram set. Ask the man who grows grape. He said, you feed your grapes Coca-Cola and cigarette salad. He said, no, I ain't mess up these grapes. I gotta make a living. This is what you feed in your DNA. I know you're trying to do well. Everyone comes, they want to better their life and all that stuff. But they go outside this door and they're gonna have a pig foot attack. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna be at Starbucks. And they say, you know how it goes. House of Pancake, is that still around? <laughs> the Dairy Queer and all these people. <laughs> so when you leave here, you're going to have that attack. And I know that's what you're going to do because you are addicted. You were made addicted by McDonald's. Keep that in mind. You're fighting an addiction. All of these people are making you addicted. That's why you keep buying uh, uh, these uh, General Motors, uh, Ford, whatever the hell it is, because you're addicted to the product. It's, it's, they don't have to prove it's good anymore. You're going to buy it anyway. Now we know the quality of things have gone down. They found out that beaver turds smell like vanilla. So now they use a beaver turds to enhance the vanilla flavor so they don't have to buy the vanilla bean. That's no big deal. I mean, people eat shit. I mean, so. So, I'm just saying, you can't, you can't keep up with the corruption these folks are doing. You're not that good. You still got all the spirituality in yourself. They, God's going to get them. They get bad. They're going to pay for that one day. Oh, yeah. Lord's going to get them. Right. You got all that stuff in your damn head. Forget about that. You want people to pay for it now. Not when you're dead and gone. Yeah, you do good, good gonna come back to you. No, no it ain't. <laughs> Being in jail, doing 20 years sentence, you can do good every day, but you ain't getting out for 20 years. <laughs> Please. 
So I'm, I'm going slow with you because that's what I did when I came out of, I was a psychotherapist for 15 years, so I know crazy when I see you. I know it when I see you. And I'm perfect. <laughs> so I'm just going slow here. I'm just saying we get rid of the salt first. Then we try to stop frying our food and bake it and boil it. I'm going slow. And then we can go to the next step of steaming our vegetables instead of boiling them for two years with hockey pucks and all that stuff y'all be using. So we're gonna start steaming, right? And you don't like brown rice, so you're gonna mix that brown rice with the white rice. Yeah, we're just gonna go slow here. Because you, when you got addiction, it's very strong. It's driven by chemicals now. You have a chemical addiction. So you gotta go slow. And you're gonna start having the right bowel movements. You're not gonna sit on the toilet incorrectly. You're gonna have it knees up above the navel so you get the right push out of your, I mean, out of your anus. You so, do it like that. So we're going to squat and have a bow. It takes less time. You don't have to be James Brown. It just takes less time. So we're going to slow because it's a lifestyle change that we're going through here. It's not just changing your diet, it's changing your life and the way you approach things. You're not going to keep saying the word sugar and honey because you're going to want some sugar. I'm going to say, how you doing sugar? How you doing honey? We oh, yeah, ain't sweet. Stop saying it. You're junk. You're just going to eat some sugar. So you got to stop saying those words. It's a whole lifestyle change. And you can't do it overnight. You got to be kind to yourself because any skill you have, you have to practice. If you want to be a good golfer, you have to practice it. If you want to be stupid, you have to practice it. You got to get in the mirror and say, stupid, stupid, stupid. You got to practice that every day. You end up saying something smart and blow your whole reputation. <laughs> so you got to practice being stupid. McDonald's practice your stupidity every day. That's what they do. Every skill has to be practiced. Ignorance has to be practiced. It doesn't come easy to be ignorant. You have to practice every skill, no matter what it is. Now, so you got to break these habits, and, and that's a learned behavior. It's a skill you require. So I'm saying, don't start a new addiction right now. You know, I know you want to do some other things. You know, go on a phone booth on Thursday and masturbate to Ray Charles. Okay? Don't go into those units. Just stay on the ones you have, and we're going to reduce those. You're going to get the right sleep. Because sleep is medicine, you're going to start drinking a gallon of water a day, hopefully spring water, or distilled water, purified water, you're not going to drink tap water, and you're not going to go for all of this stuff about alkaline water, because in physiology, your liver and your pancreas alkalize the water. If you have a weak liver, you can't alkalize the water, so you got to get a machine to do it for you. Why not fix your liver? The liver's job is to alkaline the water, alkaline your food, because you can't digest food unless it's alkaline in your small intestines. That's just basic physiology. The pancreas and the liver alkalines your food. If you messed up your pancreas with white sugar, you messed up so bad we call it diabetes, you know what I'm talking about here. Now the pancreas can't alkaline the food enough for you, so you've got to buy alkaline water. But if you have a healthy pancreas and liver, it's going to alkaline the water for you, the food for you. I'm just going through some basic chemistry right now. But I'm saying you've been had because you have a miseducation. Machines duplicate the body. They are not the body. They try to copy it. And the machines try to copy a function of the pancreas and liver because your pancreas and liver have been shot to hell with white sugar, alcohol, vinegar, all of those things are toxic to the liver and decreases the ability of the liver to alkaline the food. Apple cider vinegar is a social word for acidic acid. And acidic acid is listed in every chemistry book as a poison. I, I'm just trying to tell you. I'm, I taught science. You're going to ask me a science question, I'll answer it, but you may not like my answer. Because you know you want to put some vinegar on your green. <laughs> it ain't my fault. But acidic acid is a poison in every chemistry book. Now, if you want to eat the vinegar, you got to eat one drop per 100 pounds per hour. That's how much the body needs. Anything beyond that, the body's out. It's a poison. If you're out of the range, I can accept it. 
The body makes alcohol, the body makes bleach, the body makes ammonia, it makes all the chemicals in a certain range. One drop per hour, per 100 pounds. A shot of beer or whiskey is a month's supply of alcohol to the body. That's why you get drunk. But if you go to the bar and say, give me a drop of what? Alcohol. <laughs> That's all my body can take for hours. Get the hell out of my bar. <laughs> But if you believe it makes you feel good, somebody got to your emotions. If I poison my body, it feels good. If I get drunk, understand me now, I drink the body, I drink it with this alcohol, and the alcohol goes everywhere, your brain, your eyes, your liver, your kidney, and pancreas. All that stuff's gonna get the alcohol. But the body only wants one drop per hour per 100 pounds. Somebody said, if you make your body sick, you feel good. They got to your emotions. But your brain says, no, that doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to put vinegar in a bottle, baby's bottle and give it to a baby. They will lock you up. If a baby can't eat it, you shouldn't eat it, damn it. Let's just be too strict. Now, a Negro wants to eat his vinegar, says, so I'm gonna get some organic apple cider vinegar. Okay, get some organic cedar seven. I don't care, it's still poison. Get some organic blood wine. No, the alcohol's a poison. Don't let these people hate you out. That's how they used to sell slaves. Here you are, school teaching, they're selling you Willie Joe. Willie Joe, he's a good farmer. He can pick 10 acres of cotton a day. And then that man buy your ass and he said, look, I'm a school teacher. I don't know about picking up cotton. Now you got to ask for <laughs> Why do you want to eat rotten food? Fermented means rotten. Carbohydrates ferment. Proteins putrefy. That means they rot. Why would you want to eat a rotten apple when you get a fresh apple? I mean, after a while, you say, wait a minute, they got to your emotions. They got to your emotions. You wouldn't want to beat a rotten apple to a child. I mean, some of you say, wait a minute, the reason why you keep eating is because they got to your emotions. And your emotions are handicapped. They've been handicapped from birth. That's how they got to you. They messed you up before you got out of the womb. Then you got into a family where Willie Joe's gay, your sister's a lesbian in the corner, and your mother's in the room masturbating with an artificial dildo. I mean, so you got the whole family was crazy. You got messed up in the room, got messed up by your family. Then you go to school and they say Columbus discovered white people. I mean, then you messed up again. Then you get into a relationship that wants Sal. You know, you found out he was on the download without some panties and his drawer next to the jockey strap. Oh, Damn, you know, like, what's going on? Then your relationship messed you up. Then you meet somebody and say, I'll give you 100% love. Ain't no way you can do that, because all that was destroyed. We're talking from African culture. European culture, you can steal a car. In African culture, you can steal love. If I say I love you, I'm, that means I'm giving you 100%, but I'm only going to give you 20% because I got to give the other 20% to Lulu, right? <laughs> Down the street. Lulu getting 20%, and if you're in DC or LA, John getting 20%. <laughs> Was it New York too? Y'all don't get that day, right? Y'all don't get that like that. Yeah, yeah. I really don't. None of that. So you get this, you give somebody 100%, and they're only giving you 20 because they give it to all these different things. The porno shows that they watch, that's part of the whole of the business. So they have stole love from you. That's what I'm trying to say. Other things can be stole other than a car. If I tell you a lie, I just stole the truth from you. Other things can be stolen other than a car in our culture. Dr. Steve, you will help me uh Oh, yeah, okay. I got it. Uh, you want me to answer some questions or something? Yeah. Oh, uh, King Simon. Yeah, because they're going to make me talk all night now, and I ain't into that. Anybody who wants a question, I'm not running around. So <laughs> there you go. You're going to come up to this mic, and you're going to ask some questions. Line up at this mic and ask some questions. Yeah. Okay. Nice guy. Yeah, from Albany. Happy birthday, girl. All that me. Dr. Africa. Mm -hmm. um, 
I'm curious about carrots and aloe vera and all the things that some are saying are hybrids mm -hmm. and if these foods are bad for us. Okay. I don't know who hybridizes, nature hybridizes plants as well. You can go to volcanic ashes in Kenya and the okra will grow six or seven feet tall. But okra down south will grow up to your knees because they're tall. Nature hybridizes plants by the soil and by their location. It's just that when someone else does it, then you'll have a problem with nature does it all the time. We just copy in nature. So I don't know if it's hybridized carried by nature or hybridized carried by man. It's two different things. It's, it's like people say uh, fructose is bad for you. No, it's not bad for you unless it's cooked fructose. When nature makes it, it's okay. Oil is not bad for you if it's still in the corn. But when, they, when you make it and call it corn oil, now you've got a problem. But when nature made it, it was fine. So carrots are good for you and all these other things you name are good for you. It's not a problem. It's the soil that does it many times. And if you don't know botany, you can't make the distinction. What is the substitute for beer? What is the substitute for masturbation? What is the substitute for air? None. No such thing. Now, if you want to simulate the taste, use raw lemon juice. Okay. Or raw right. lime juice, but don't. Okay. There's no substitute. Okay. That's right. Thanks. You, you'll be fine. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, um, what do you think of the blood type diet? It's, uh, I'm trying to be very scientific. I would just say it's bullshit. Um, um, it's um, not scientific. It's only scientific if you eat that type of diet, you will get those type of diseases. But there's no scientific basis for that blood type of thing at all. We was actually, my wife and I, we were um, just, you know, talking to different herbologists and people were saying that, you know, type O should be different than type A's and B's and so on and so forth. And I, we did some research on, you know, from what you were saying and, um, and it was definitely, you know, you're definitely saying don't eat meat. But from, this, from what this was saying, it was like an O should eat meat and an A shouldn't eat meat. And, I don't know, some of the things that it said as far as myself is, a, is an A positive, and it said like I shouldn't eat certain nuts, and I shouldn't eat certain types of things, and when I did eat those things over the years, it did make my stomach hurt or made me gassy and whatnot. So it seemed like it kind of made sense, but obviously what you said made a lot more sense too, so I really wanted to just really see what you thought about it. Well, my thoughts are personal, but the scientific facts are what they are. And the facts of this, I don't know whether you're eating the plant when it's ripe. Ripe rice is partially green. Ripe beans are partially green. We are eating unripe food. That's why you have to cook it. Ripe beans are partially green. When they're unripe, they don't have any green on them at all. Ripe rice is partially green. Non-sweet fruits ripen early. Sweet fruits ripen late. Banana ripens late. Okra ripens early. Anybody from the South, you gotta get that okra when it's young. You wait till it's older, it's too tough to even chew. Does anyone from the South, anybody know anything about the country? Yeah, yeah, some people, thank you. Because y'all think you put cat out of, out of Walmart. I mean, <laughs> no. So I don't know, we have to go back and clarify so many things, and that was done in 1920, and the technology wasn't there for the blood classification. That's another thing that you have to understand. The technology wasn't there when they classified the blood. And so a lot of that is what you call causal, causal implications. 
I don't, I don't want to get too involved in this, but it's like this. In order to test the effectiveness of a drug, say a drug for cancer, you got to get 100 people that have cancer, give 50 people the drugs for 20 years, and give the other 50 people no cancer drug for 50 years. That's the only way you can test the effectiveness of a drug. So you got to let some people stay sick for 50 years to test the effectiveness of the drug, and they can't do that. So we call that causal implications. So it's all that's involved in this blood type that he's talking about. They didn't have the technology because African people's blood type is different from white people's blood type. That's the thing the science has, has to define me. It's a totally different blood type. It's a totally different type of melanin that we have. We have what we call euromelanin, which has blue, indigo, violet, red, yellow, and orange. And white people have what we call a theo, a pseudo kind of melanin. That melanin has yellow, red, and orange, but it doesn't have blue, violet, and indigo. So they have a kind of a melanin, but they don't have the same melanin that you have. Their melanin has sulfur in the center. Your melanin has selenium in the center. It's a total different kind of melanin. So you have to do a different type of blood test for that type of melanin in the blood. Because when you test in blood, you tell us testing melanin inside of the blood cell. So they weren't even talking think about melanin back then. It's a whole different scientific vocabulary that's needed. And so, in, in other words, what he's saying is totally correct for his people. But he don't know nothing about our people. Sigmund Freud's conclusion about his people is totally right. They hung up on sex. But he never did any therapy on African people. So when Sigmund Freud say white people are messed up and crazy, I say, you right. <laughs> Sigmund Freud is right. Because he tested white people, but he didn't test no black people. So you got to look at who this tester is that's establishing this norm value and what type of instruments he used to establish his norms. And the testing instruments they had in that time to establish blood type are nowhere near what we have today. Nowhere. That's 1920s stuff you're talking about. You know how fast the technology grows. You know how much your cell phone gets outdated every six months. You know that stuff. So, uh, yeah, you were probably eating unripe vegetables and fruits. And remember, every plant has a fruit. I doesn't mean the plant get, but I'm just saying, every plant has a fruit. Okra is a fruit. Tomatoes is a fruit. Barley is a fruit. Rice is a fruit. Rye is a fruit. Barley is a fruit. Millet is a fruit. So we don't know what fruits are. We've been, so we're getting all this. It's no such thing as a grain on a plant. <laughs> it's no grain, it's a fruit. So we got to understand what a fruit is and what's a non fruit. Roots of a tree is not a fruit. The apple is the fruit of the tree, but not the roots and the leaves and the bark. Are you still with me there? Yeah. So they were testing unripe fruit. And the test was done on white women any damn way. How are you going to trust a heifer with no behind? Oh, shit. No, no, I didn't mean to go there. I didn't mean to go there. I'm sorry. They just suffer from a disease called no acetal. No acetal. <laughs> I hang out with a lot of kids and eat myself, I smoke herb. So I want to know, like, uh, you know, what, what, because uh, a lot of people say it's good, some people say it's that me. From my experience, I love it. <laughs> 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 yeah, yes, I, 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 I appreciate you being truthful and laughing with you being truthful. I, I like that. He's going to find out for himself. He won't know the truth. And he's being truthful to get the truth. I like that. When you put a match to the marijuana, it's no longer organic. It's synthetic. If you put a match to some hay and give it to some cow, they can look at it and move that shit. Move, move. <laughs> when you put the match to it. Now it's a synthetic chemical. And you like a synthetic chemical made from the marijuana. You can eat the marijuana all you want. You can make tea out of it, make a biscuit, whatever you want. But once you put a match to it, it's now a synthetic chemical. And all synthetic chemicals are addictive. Alcohol, vinegar, salt, all of them. 
If you cook it, you can make a person addicted to it. Alcohol is cooked, they call it distillation. Cocaine is cooked, you don't tell me the truth. The truth, the tobacco is cooked. Once you cook it, you can make them addicted to it. That's for sure. But if you, you want to get off of it, and you want another, or do you ask them to be your hand? So you don't know if the yeah. weed is organic or genetically modified. Yeah. You don't know if it's sprayed on, or peed on. You know, I know what my weed is sprayed on. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Mine's just like, uh -oh. I'm just saying. <laughs> Carbohydrates permanent. 
proteins putrefy. Those are two different processes. And he's saying that this, you get this rotten milk, which is fermented, is another word for rotten. Let's be ghetto for a minute. You're telling me you put some rotten milk in a bottle and give it to a baby. That's all right. No. If you're eating raw, you're going to make the acidophilus in your intestines anyway. If you're eating raw, you will make the acidophilus. But if your digestion is so weak that you can't produce the bacteria and fungus you need to digest your food, as a treatment intervention, you may use some yogurt. But that's an intervention. That's not meant to be a steady part of your diet. As a treatment intervention, you may need to take an enema. But the enema is not meant to be a steady part of your diet. Because the food will give you a natural enema if it's raw. But these are intervention techniques that people just make it normal for some reason. You don't need the yogurt, just eat raw food, you'll be just fine. Raw food or raw milk? Well, only raw milk for a human is in a woman's dick. Okay. And you talk about chasing a cow around all day? No, 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 no. Raw breast milk is meant for human beings. Raw cow is meant for cow. You, this is just nature. Raw rat milk is meant for rats. You can get milk from rats. You got enough here in New York to feed all everybody. <laughs> Sucking on rat titties is a good thing, and you're in the raw. I'm saying some things are just stupid. <laughs> but I, I understand your question because we come at it in science, we come at you with all this stuff. And we got scientists that push cigarettes at one time. I'm just telling you how it is. Scientists that push this. Sci scientists on both sides of whoever's paying them. That's you right. can't trust these clowns. That's right. Whoever's paying them, that's who they push. I'm just telling you how it is in this business. But you, you have to sometimes get away from that whole European education that, wait a minute. This guy is telling me to eat rotten food. The, you know, he said, wait a minute, the, I wasn't meant to, God made me, I, you know, I'm raw and fresh, so I should eat raw and fresh food, because I'm raw and fresh, you know. If you're rotten, eat rotten food. <laughs> but nonetheless, if, you can just go by the quality of your, your, your you have a fart. <laughs> whisper out of your ass. You have a whisper out of your ass. You have a fart. Now, if the fart, some people say, I didn't do that. Some people say they blow in a kiss. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, but if you fart and the fart smells like a bowel with manure, then you have a problem because your fart should smell like what you ate. Yeah. You ate apples, your fart should be an apple fart. <laughs> but if your fart smells like shit, there's something wrong with you. After a while, you say, wait a minute, when a cow has a bowel with that bowel that smells like hay, <laughs> prove me wrong. So we, we're eating out of order and respecting a natural order and we have to go back and say, no, wait a minute, let's put this in the order right here. You're not supposed to eat rotten food. Let's go back and put it in the right order and then ask you the question. So we got a whole lot to overcome when we've been miseducated. That's our problem. It's not a problem with you. It's a person that's out of miseducation by the scientists themselves. <coughs> by Pfizer scientists. But these scientists lie. Whoever's paying them, that's what they will say. They're white people. <laughs> yeah, if we got black ones too, Negroes certified. <laughs> Clarence Thomas. Hi, how are you? Um, well, I was going to ask a question about um, marijuana, but the brother came and we smoked all up. <laughs> So my, my question is uh, somewhere along the same thread. Um, there's a there's a psychedelic compound uh, known as DMT, uh, which you know, is short for dimethyltryptamine. It's um, well, like I said, it's a psychedelic compound. Yeah. As well, it's you know, it's found throughout the. Yeah, it's supposed to be known as a spiritual gene. I understand dimethyltryptamine, DMT, is right. a spiritual cell, and black people have more than than others. It has a reputation for. Uh, the shaman is used in South America in a group called Ayahuasca and it has a reputation and it's said to be able to uh, make the, you know, certain activity and certain entities in the etheric plane visible, you know, to the human eye. And, you know, some people say it opens up the pineal plane, you know, mm -hmm. So my question to you is, well, obviously you're familiar with the entities. Oh, yeah, I'm familiar. So, so what, are your, what are your views? And, uh, 
your thoughts on this news? He's asking me about this uh, DMT, which is called a spiritual cell. The chemistry name is dimethyltryptamine. And he's saying that this opens up a higher consciousness. You can get it from plants and all that. It's going to open up this higher consciousness and higher wisdom. And I'm saying you can give that to a moron. They can still be a moron. Amen. I'm just telling you the facts. That's not going to... If it's not already there, it can't give you something that's not there. It can't create something. Only God can create you have to be people here. You can't create more spirituality in you if you're not spiritual. What are you talking about? Just, so I'm just saying that's just a belief. The science is what it is. Give that to a moron and see how spiritual they become. It ain't going to happen. Nice belief, though. My hands get cold often. And they get sweaty too. What can I do to, to fix that? What's the problem? His hands get cold and sweaty too. He wants to know how to correct the problem. Uh, my book, Holistic Self Diagnosing, will take you through the eyes, teeth, tongue, ears, throat, hair. There it is. Stand up, brother. There you can see. That book will teach you how to diagnose yourself and you won't have to ask me all these damn questions. <laughs> and you won't have to go to the doctor because it will teach you how to diagnose your body from your teeth, your tongue, your hair, your eyebrow, your nose, your fingernails, your toenails, your abdomen, your breasts, your back, your knees, your posture, your hair. That costs $39.95. It's 600 pages with illustrations. I draw what it looks like. Stand up and tell them. Stand up and tell them how to get it. That's the issue. <laughs> how to get it is you go to my site, which is laelaafrica.com. That is my site. Not Doc Africa. Laelaafrica.com. Or Amazon. Or Amazon.com. Okay, they, they finished the commercial. <laughs> Yeah, but you go to my site and you can get it for Amazon.com. That is correct. My wife is uh, giving, I'm telling her what to say. Because I'm in charge. Why should she? How's everyone doing? The new book is actually $58.95, but when you're in an event like this, he sells it. Thank you. I appreciate that. He sells it for, he says $39.99. I say $40. It's a big difference. But there isn't any here. No, it was supposed to be here, and it was like my technical difficulties, but we have made it. If you pay for it today, Simon has a location where you can pick them up. Nicholas. So, come on up, baby. Stop playing. Nicholas. <laughs> Nicholas, 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 if you do it any other way, you have to pay for shipping. Yeah. Shipping on the book is yeah. a little hefty because yeah. it's a big book. Fifty something dollars, I paid. Do you have a PDF file? No. No. Huh? Not yet. You said PDF? Yes. PDF. No, it just came out. Holistic self diagnosing the DVD. Holistic self diagnosis. Yes. Yes. Not quite the book. And you wouldn't believe that Dr. Africa is the artist in this. He did the artwork. Yeah, no, he did a great job. He did a great job. I read it. I was reading that from from some artist. Yeah, you know. Okay. You all right? Yeah. Okay. We only got we got we got another we got another 15 minutes. I, I'm not that much of an artist. He just I, I I was an art major in high school. I had to do drawing in this book, but I'm not there. Thank you, brother. He's the last one here, brother. Was there any, any answer? Just go get the book. Huh? Just get the book. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you know, I, I was, I'm saying this, this poor circulation of the hands and the sweaty hands, usually the sweaty hands associated with the liver. You see, I'm just giving you information, not telling you how to arrive at it. The book's going to tell you how you arrive at these things. Rather than come to these lectures and stuff, you can just tell you, take this, take that. I'm teaching you how to arrive at it, how to understand it for yourself. Because I'm not going to be around all my, all, around y'all all my life. I'm going to die one day. I hope y'all realize that. <laughs> so, so, so I'm just saying, get the book and, and be able to be, empower yourself to take care of yourself. So. Okay, okay. Uh, we'll tell them, we'll tell them that was the last person. And the, uh, the cold hands and the feet probably reduce circulation, which is caused by sugar and salt, honey, anything that shrinks down the arteries and veins will reduce the circulation causing cold hands and feet. So that can indicate some kind of nerve damage. But how I'm arriving at this, this conclusion is what I want you to understand for yourself. That the, the arteries and veins shrank down and they didn't bring enough blood to the hands and feet because they were too narrow. And the blood is keeping the hands warm, but the circulation is reduced so the coldness increases. And that's usually something involving the pancreas. The pancreas, which, is, which you associate with diabetes and things of that sort. So uh, I would suggest you treat your pancreas Treat your liver because the liver is the greatest source of heat in your body. It heats up your heart, your pancreas, your sleep. The liver is your heating furnace. All this in the book. I'm trying to get you to understand this stuff for yourself. This stuff has to be. So get something for your liver, get something for your pancreas. All you have to do is tell them that to help you. I need something for my pancreas. I need something for my pancreas. Which I have up here, by the way. I'm not trying to say. Thank you for that wonderful presentation. Oh, um, thank you. Thank you. My, my question is uh, regarding my sister who is uh, recovering from TENS right now. That's uh, toxic epidural um, necrolysis, I believe it's called. Mm -hmm. um, my understanding is that um, while she was um, hospitalized a couple weeks ago, um, she was given an uh, antibiotic which was sulfur based. And that antibiotic caused her immune system to turn against itself. Um, how concerned should we be about sulfur based anything, given the fact that we are a civilian based people? Uh, sulfur was the penicillin of the dead. That's what they used to sprinkle on the slaves if you've ever seen a movie called Goodbye Your Time. Sulfur went down because that was believed to be the penicillin of that era. Uh, nonetheless, he's talking about some nerve damage associated with the system. And nerve damage is usually treated with things like fever, flu, glutamine. Um, you're going to need anti-inflammatory, maybe some pastor. But I would just say MS now. But I have a, a supplement over there for her illness, by the way. Yeah. Good with the nervous system and muscles, I'm gonna go sodium potassium. You see? 
you pick out your, your, your scrim area to make your evaluation. I mean, you wouldn't make an evaluation in chemistry if you're a biologist. That's not your thing. You make your evaluation in the science that you're good at. So they're making the correct um, assessment, but they're not putting it all together for you. So catasm is usually associated with the female. And you're losing that because your body's using that to nurture, to heal, and to soothe, and to emotionally comfort you. Yes, that's, that's what catasm does. Yeah, that's part of it, my dear. Yeah, really. <laughs> so I'm just saying, and the protein is associated with stress, hypertension. And you just said you live in New York, so that covers everything. <laughs> <laughs> you stress, your hypertension, you're trying to nurture yourself in an unnurturing situation. <laughs> yeah, just do the best you can. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of things going around right now with young people. Uh, a lot of young people are getting with the diagnosis of being uh, schizophrenia. Uh, is there any type of uh, thing that you can do to reverse that process? Or that? Yeah, yeah, he's talking about a mood and thought disorder. A mood and thought disorder is called schizophrenia. That's all he's talking about. The mood is not synchronized with the thought. You can, be, you can be angry and then you laugh and it's not no synchronization. So we call that schizophrenia. And most black people are schizophrenic. Because we go to work and we smile. We don't want to be there and then I don't know if <laughs> That's schizophrenia. But none of this. When we're dealing with the nutrients, we usually use GABA, G-A-B-A, because -A, it helps stabilize the, the mood. G-A-B-A. G-A-B-A? Yeah, I have a supplement that's called Mood. It will okay. stabilize your mood. Okay. Yeah, that's one of the things. You're going to use some glutamine. That's another thing. And you're going to use taurine, which stops you from having convulsion, just jumping up and doing it. No. You can use those amino acids. But I have all that put together with the herbs. Okay. Uh, so, does that, does that also like stop the voices? Yeah, you, you need the mood. You don't need my mood supplement. Probably some other things that okay. I'm just pointing right now or something. Do. That can do something immediately. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. I think you're the last person. No. Yes. No. So we talk a lot about the relationship between the mother and the child. So my question is, do you have a book? Uh, you know, like I'm thinking about homeschooling, and that's a whole process, and there's a lot of things that I've heard you say um, that I guess some people just don't know in the society because of what we were originally taught. So do you have a book that kind of guides a mother more to how she should raise a child with and so on? Yes, that's called Raising Black Children. I have a book that takes you right through the steps, how to diagnose their personality, okay. the type of listening style, thinking style, what to do when they wet the bed, suck their thumb, cuss you out, masturbate. I have all this kind of things <laughs> in there. Okay. Yeah. And Just you think about school? Like, uh, well, first we got to build a spiritual foundation. I have how to structure that spiritual foundation. School is pop political. So. Okay. I had to teach them how to navigate that whole thing. You okay. know? Yes, this is my raising black Thank you so much. And I have one other, one other question. Could you tell us a little bit more about the sexual regeneration? Yeah, uh, I guess I could, but that's two questions, and, and everybody's, they say no. Yeah. They say no. You got a DVD on it. I have a DVD on it, yeah, they tell me, yeah. You about Last question. Uh, how good is juice and celery? How good is juice and celery? Guess it's all right. I mean, you know, it's, juicing is appropriate in its place, but the better nutrition is done when you chew it, because you got to set up the right enzymatic pathway to break down the food. Enzyme chain starts at your mouth, but if you're going to juice it, you're going to have to add water to it because you always dilute your food with spit. And when you juice it, you bypass the dilution process that starts in your mouth. 
So I would add a half a cup to a cup of water to the juice, raw organic, apple does not matter what kind, before I drink it. Otherwise, it's too much stress on the pancreas and liver, and you're just going to cause the kidneys to crash eventually. Thank you. Thank you.